Over the eight years that I've been playing Fire Emblem, one thing that I'm surprised isn't brought up as one of the many misdeeds that this series has bred are these god-awful box arts. Now in the early 90s, for those who didn't know, games looked like this and not this. And so now we have the issue of trying to advertise a game that is objectively unattractive to the average consumer. So to fix this issue, box art developers essentially either made things up, or made something so bad that it looks made up. There was a third option however, stick your main character on the front cover and hope he looks appealing enough to sell. This was the root for emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light took. And, well, I actually like this box art. Even if I didn't know Fire Emblem, I could very well easily guess what year this game's box art came from. And in general, I'm just really fond of the stuff that came from the 90s if you couldn't tell. There is one somewhat glaring issue that is very visible to the naked eye, and it's Marth's ostentatious legs. Come on dude, there's like kids here or something. You can't even deny that Marth's design was somewhat off-putting, as intelligent systems themselves knew that the world wasn't ready for Marth's flamboyant legs as they soon covered them up in Mystery of the Emblem's box art, but not the in-game sprite for some reason. But now that we're done making fun of a box art made for a game that's over 30 years old, let's move on to the legendary box art that is Gaiden. Now I'm not going to make fun of the artwork too much since it's more so a product of its time, but one thing that I am going to criticise is Valabar. Why is he there? No, like seriously, he's not a main character by any stretch of the imagination, so why is he there? My only plausible theory is that someone in intelligent systems just really likes Valabar. Like he has pictures of him on his wall, and he makes it his entire personality. I can't even begin to fathom the tears that Valabar guy shed when his Husbando wasn't on the Shadows of Valentia box art. But you wanna know what made me shed tears? The Fire Emblem genealogy of the Holy Ball box art. Now what upsets me about this box art isn't the fact that it's ugly, because god knows it is, but the fact that it was so close to looking so good. I'm really fond of the art style that they had going here, but it just gets completely soiled by Self's face. Of course there's probably other factors at play here, such as Self's not having a sheath for tapering, and Sigurd being a bit too far in the background for a main character, but most of the issues stem from Self's face. His mouth looks off, and his eyes seem to be wandering off elsewhere unlike the rest of the body which is directed towards the viewer. In all fairness, FE4's artwork as a whole is very hit or miss. I tried looking for the official FE4 artist so I could use them as a scapegoat in order to protect the precious image of genealogy of the Holy War, but according to some guy on Reddit reading up the wiki, apparently the artist is unknown for these games. I then looked through some of the old Kage interviews in Serena's Forest, and found a paragraph that seems to imply Mayumi Hirota worked on this game's artwork, but according to another guy on Reddit, this was actually in reference to the drawings in the Fire Emblem Treasure Book artwork, which checks out seeing as Hirota's art in is leagues above FE4's art. And besides, Hero is a real one for sticking with Cargo 4's later works. Someone this based could never have produced the FE4 box art. Well, seeing as Vesteria Saga has been out for a while, I'm kinda curious to what other stuff Hero has been working on recently. Oh. Well, that stinks. <laughs> 